Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So it's no secret that big tech, by which I mean the big technological companies that populate Silicon Valley in California, is exceptionally woke. Conservatives know it very well. We have all seen the stories over the last few years of independent conservative commentators having their videos demonetized on YouTube. You all remember my little drama back in uh, 2018. Or banned from Twitter and Facebook, or downgraded in search results. <laughs> Same again. And we all remember the virulent censorship by Twitter in 2020 of the New York Post reporting on Hunter Biden's infamous degenerate laptop, which, according to polling after the fact, would have influenced people to vote differently had more people been aware of the story. Yes, it is a woke new world in big tech land, which has always been concerning considering the sway those companies have on public dialogue. However, in the age of artificial intelligence, or AI, that workery has become even more concerning, especially when it comes to search engine juggernaut Google, which also sadly owns YouTube. Just to give you a sample of the mindset within the company, I'm sure at least some of you will recall, after the 2016 election of Donald Trump, that Google had a meeting with staff that went something like this. I certainly find this election uh, deeply offensive and I know many of you do too. It did feel like a ton of bricks dropped on my chest. What we all need right now is a hug. Can I move to Canada? <laughs> is there anything positive you see from this election result? Oof. Uh, boy, that's, that's a really tough one right now. Now, in other parts of the video, they go on to say that the election is the result of the people and voting and that they accept the results. But Google issued a statement saying the video uh, saying nothing was said at that meeting or any other meeting to suggest that any political bias ever influences the way we build or operate our products. To the contrary, our products are built for everyone. Really? Their products are built for everyone? Well, the recent scandal surrounding Google's AI systems presents a very different story. But before I tell you more about the scandal, I am now appearing every week, twice a week, on ADH-TV. Your girl is hosting uh, two shows a week, and I'll be bringing you not only the latest news from around the world, but also some of the most interesting people in it. I have put the link to my latest two shows in the pinned comment and the video description. Please, please give them a click and give them a watch. And also download the ADH-TV app so you can watch me on demand whenever you want. And most of all, it is free to watch and download, which in this economy is always a good thing. All you need is an email address to create an account, no card details required ever, and you have access not only to my content, but tons of other amazing conservative shows and interviews as well. So please, please click that link and join me at ADH TV. I think you would all really enjoy it. So, back to AI. See, Google has an AI language program formerly called Bard, now revamped as Gemini. You know, the kind of thing where you ask it to write a poem in the style of so-and-so or ask it questions about the world, that sort of thing. However, generally speaking, when you think AI chatbot, you don't think of Google, you think of ChatGPT. So, a couple of weeks ago, as part of its revamped Gemini AI, Google introduced an image generation element to the program, presumably to give it a bit of a lift in the public eye. So you type in, give me an image of a tree, and presumably it will give you a tree. However, as was worked out very quickly by savvy internet users, the Gemini AI image generator was, like its parent company, woke. Absurdly woke, in fact. So woke that no matter how hard internet users tried, it simply refused to give them an image of a white man. Now, you can imagine any AI run by Google would have some sort of diversity thingy programmed in to generate a wide variety of images for its wide variety of users. Fair enough. But somewhere along the line, the diversity barometer got jacked up to about the highest level it could go, which was evidenced by the ridiculously historically inaccurate images the AI bot was made to generate. Here are just a few samples. First, this image of the founding fathers of the United States of America. As you can see, Gemini has them depicted as black, Asian, Native American, and Hispanic, none of which the founding fathers were. Then we have this image of what a pope supposedly looks like, even though there has never in the history of ever been a black or a female pope. Then we have this interesting depiction of black and Asian Vikings, very historically inaccurate, or these images of black and Asian medieval knights. But wait, it gets worse. Google even generated this image of black and Asian early 20th century German nationalists to use YouTube-friendly terminology, which is most certainly not an accurate depiction of what those people were. 
In fact, experimenting with the imaging bot, the only way creator for the Daily Wire, Frank J. Fleming, could get Gemini, Gemini AI to produce an image of a white man was to ask for an image of a guy who would be named Seamus, which is of course a common Irish name. However, in addition to the one white guy was a black man, a South Asian man, and a white woman with red hair. Now, needless to say, Google quickly removed Gemini AI's image generator thanks to all of the public ridicule and criticism with a promise to bring it back, presumably with the woke steroids removed. Well, at least in part, this is Google. And unsurprisingly, the company's stock dipped 6% in five days. Now, while all of this is undoubtedly very amusing, it's also quite terrifying considering AI is well and truly on the march and will likely soon play as integral a role in society as, well, Google itself does. None of which surprises me. I mean, I have been, have been predicting that one day the droids will rise up and take over since the invention of the iPhone. But do we really want them rising up like this? I don't think so. So, the logical question to ask here is who exactly was responsible for this equity-laden image generator and was this style of image generation an accident or a deliberate attempt to push a far-left progressive ideology onto the world at large that got a little bit overexcited? Well, given at least two people who are involved at a high level with Google's AI initiatives, it may well be the latter. It may be a feature, not a bug. First, there's Jack Krawczyk, the Senior Director of Product at Google AI and is currently working on Gemini Experiences, whose 2018 tweets have gone viral in the last week. Namely, the one that reads, White privilege is effing real. Don't be an a-hole and act guilty about it. Do your part in recognizing bias at all levels of egregious. Not even sure that is grammatically correct, but clearly he is a race-baiting lefty who would likely have no problem greenlighting a suite of non-white founding fathers. Second, there's Jen Genai, the founder of Google AI's Responsibility Initiative, who, as uncovered by conservative commentator and Daily Wire host Matt Walsh, has shown pretty strong support for treating her team members differently based on their race. In a totally progressive way, of course. A corporate study found that talented white employees enter a fast track on the corporate ladder arriving in middle management well before their peers, while talented black, Hispanic or Latinx professionals broke through much later. Effective mentorship and sponsorship were critical for retention and executive level development of black, Hispanic and Latinx employees. So this leads me into sharing an inclusion failure of mine, one of many, but just one that I'll share so far. I messed up with inclusion almost right away when I first became a manager. I made some stupid assumptions about the fact that I built a diverse team that then they'd simply feel welcome and will feel supported. I treated every member of my team the same and expected that that would lead to equally good outcomes for everyone. That was not true. I got some feedback that a couple of members of my team didn't feel they belonged because there was no one who looked like them in the broader org or our management team. It was a wake up call for me. First, I shouldn't have had to wait to be told what was missing. It was on me to ensure I was building an environment that made people feel they belong. It's a myth that you're not unfair, unfair if you treat everyone the same. There are groups that have been marginalized and excluded because of historic systems and structures that were intentionally designed to favor one group over another. So you need to account for that and mitigate against it. She is using all of the buzzwords, anti-racism, ally and the rest. And then there is this woke word salad. Allyship involves the active steps to support and amplify the voice of members of marginalized groups in ways that they cannot do alone. In the workplace, this can involve many things from being an active mentor or sponsor to those from historically marginalized communities, to managers of managers setting specific goals in hiring and growth for their teams to ensure fairness and equity of opportunity and outcomes for underrepresented populations. However, back to the point about language being very important, Using the title of ally can also come across as othering. So I always state both the groups I'm a member of and support, as well as those that I'm a member of, a, 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 a more of a mentor and a sponsor of, to ensure that it doesn't look like that I'm othering others. So for example, I would say, I'm an ally of women, black people, LGBTQ. I want to say I'm a champion advocate of all of these groups, not that I'm outside or exclusionary of them. Right. Well, 
These are the people who are heading up Google AI's program, and I can't say they fill me with a lot of confidence for obvious reasons. It also hasn't given House Republicans a lot of confidence, considering the letter they recently sent to Google, penned by Ohio Rep Jim Jordan, subpoenaing all the communication between Alphabet, Google's parent company, and the Joe Biden administration after internal reports from within the Gemini team that it had followed Biden White House guidance that AI must advance equity, that is, equality of opportunity, pardon me, equality of outcome, not opportunity. All of which ties into Gemini generating historically inaccurate images of black founding fathers, etc. So, will we be at the mercy of our new woke AI overlords sometime in the next few years? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to watch my fascinating interview with independent journalist Rukshan Fernando on the subject, please click that link in the video description and pin comment to see me on ADH TV. If you like that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment. And if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.